I would probably say, you know, um, these are going to be talking about like, these are like real crimes. Like, I would imagine that there is probably, it, this is probably going to be triggering to some people. I would assume that this is going to be triggering for sure. These are real cases, uh, real, this is real. These are real people and real crime that has happened. So just be aware. Atlantic coast and the wealthy city of Boynton Beach started to settle down for a Sunday evening. It was around that time when 38 year old entrepreneur Michael DiPolito, whose oh wife was out of town, decided it would be a good idea to hire an escort for the night. Just 35 minutes after calling the service, 26-year-old Dahlia Mohammed showed up at his front door. Just two weeks after their first acquaintance, Michael filed for divorce I from his seen wife of seven years and proposed to Dahlia with a $20,000 engagement ring. Okay, am I? Okay, listen. I, okay, this is the one time I'm going to pause it, but I just want to say... I cannot believe how much people spend on wedding days, like wedding dresses, rings, uh, just all of it. I cannot believe. Is DMCA still? The music in the background? What am I supposed to do? Is, does it stop? Does the music in the background stop? Oh, it does stop. Six months later. 20k? Like, I would be fine with just, like, a silver band. You know? Can someone tell me what he talked about? Uh, wait, wait, this was the music. Okay, whatever. We're, here, we're, we'll start here. Six months later. Hidden camera, undercover cop posing as a hitman. <gasps> hey. hey. We're staying in Paris. How about you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This would be the first of a total 15 times that Dahlia would look directly into the hidden camera. With the naked eye, she would only see a small hole in the corner of the back seat. Not overly suspect, but certainly unusual, and the fact that she continuously glanced at it throughout this setup proved that she harbored suspicion. But although she had doubts, she appeared to have no hesitation in accepting the risk for the potential reward, which in this case would have been the brutal murder of her newlywed husband. In order to recite the entire sequence of events that led up to this moment, including each of the highly calculated and equally corrupt decisions that Dahlia made, this would need to be a three-part series. So for the purpose of time management, here's a quick rundown of the most notable moments. On February 2nd, 2009, Mike and Dahlia made it official and got married. According to reports, Dahlia appeared to be a very loving wife, always embracing her husband with public displays of affection and telling him how much she adored him, even to the point where people around them started to get uncomfortable. Just over a month into their marriage, in the early morning hours of March 12th, Michael's probation officer knocked at the door, with two deputies standing beside him. Michael had been convicted in 2001 for a fraud operation. He served seven months in prison and was rendered 28 years of probation. This was the first time his PO had showed up unannounced, and Michael was informed that multiple calls had come in from an anonymous source, stating that he was selling steroids and ecstasy from the house. They presented him with a warrant and began to search the premises. If the allegation were proven to be true, Michael could have been sent back to prison for over 10 years. Luckily for him, no illegal substances were found. The next weekend, Dahlia suggested a spur-of-the-moment romantic getaway in Palm Beach, and the couple stayed at a luxury hotel that Saturday night. But on the Sunday morning, police were waiting for them in the parking lot, stating they received an anonymous call that he was dealing drugs out of his car. They searched the vehicle, but once again found nothing. 
Two weeks later, they went out to dinner, and on their way back to the car, police were waiting for them once more in the parking lot, only this time they found a small bag of cocaine stashed inside a cigarette pack. Michael immediately broke down in tears, claiming that he had been set up and knew nothing about the drugs. Incredibly, the police believed him and decided not to make an arrest. <gasps> they later testified that the first reason was due to the conspicuous and unusual hiding place for the cocaine. The second reason was their suspicions of his wife, Dahlia, who appeared emotionless as her husband was having a nervous breakdown. On the ride home, as Dahlia was driving, Michael realized that she was the only one who knew where they were going for dinner, and was the only person who had access to the car. So he asked her point blank if she had anything to do with it, and the accusation wasn't taken well. She put the pedal to the floor and got up to 190 on the freeway, all the while screaming at the top of her lungs, claiming to be astonished that he could even accuse her of such a thing. Out of fear of his life, Michael apologized and said that he didn't mean it. The next morning, Dahlia was aware that Michael's suspicions had arisen and knew she had to divert his attention somehow. So just after making him breakfast, she gave him the incredibly exciting yet completely fictitious news that she was pregnant. Michael was ecstatic. They went out and bought baby books, and the dubious circumstances that occurred the night before appeared to have been forgotten. That very same day, Dahlia contacted her ex-lover, Mike Stanley, a guy she had already used for money and dumped on three separate occasions beforehand, yet managed to reel him back in with a single text. Baby, I miss you so much, I wanna After fuck- After reunited, <laughs> Dahlia had- Oh wait, what the- <laughs> Oh, what the fuck, call me, XOXO. <laughs> Yeah, there's no cap uh, there's no captions on this video unfortunately. After reuniting, Dahlia hatched an extravagant plan. Mike would pose as a lawyer, contact Michael over the phone, and give him the misleading legal advice that in order for him to get off probation, he would need to move his house solely into his wife's name. Astonishingly enough, without doing his own research, Michael decided to take the advice from the mysterious caller at face value, oh, God, and he and poor, his supposedly pregnant Michael. wife then drove to the title company to transfer ownership. Mike Stanley was then cut off without any explanation or even a farewell and Dahlia then turned to another ex-lover, Mohammed Shihadeh, who she must have thought was a more appropriate option for her next scheme. To cut a long story short, she asked Mohammed to hire Jesus a hitman Christ. to kill her husband. He neither accepted nor rejected the proposal, but instead of driving to work after their meeting, he drove to the Boynton Police Department to inform them of Dahlia's intentions. The police <laughs> then inserted a hidden camera into the backseat Good. of Mohammed's vehicle and had him arrange a second rendezvous with Dahlia to get definitive proof of her intentions. Intentions. They got it. She was recorded on film handing over a photo of Michael, a photo of the house, and a $3,000 down payment for the assassination. The authorities had more than enough evidence to arrest Dahlia immediately, but to further capture her intent and to really make the charges stick, they set up a second meeting with a supposed hitman, who is actually an undercover narcotics officer. And that brings us back to the very first moment Dahlia looked directly into the hidden camera. I know I got a Why does she want to kill him for money? Uh, I gave, I, <laughs> Until Sorry. after the fact. And then after the fact, I guess you were going to come and, like, find me or whatever. I mean, I'm good for it. Like, it's not like I don't have it. No, no, I... Anything. I mean, I know not to fuck around with you. You know certain things, whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you obviously know where I'm at. <laughs> The thing about self-destruction is that it happens all the time, and it's most often a very difficult thing to witness, as it can be the casual sequence of uncontrollable circumstances, such as adversity, tragedy, or misfortune. Yet when a person's self-destruction occurs solely due to their own greed and corruption, it becomes far less difficult and a lot more fascinating to behold. I could get it on my Wednesday if you want me to, you know what I'm saying? But I gotta do my homework, you know? I gotta, you know, know exactly where the place is and how to get out of there. I can't believe how disgusting some people are.
break a couple windows, make it look like a robbery that went bad, and it's all over. I'm gone out of there. Police are going to be asking you questions, although they know it's going to be obvious what it is, and they already know, but, you know, they're going to ask questions, you know, because that's how they got to do it. Oh, man. I don't know how well you have pressure. That's so scary. No, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm a lot tougher. Two people talking about killing you. You know, but I'm not. That you are. You're actually beautiful. Thank you, but, you know, I just need to make sure everything's gonna be Between now and when it's done, you know, you're not gonna have an option to change your mind. Even if you change your mind, you're not talking to There's no changing, no, there's no, like, I'm determined already. I'm positive, like, 5,000% sure, like, yeah, the undercover cop is doing such a good job. Okay. Acting like a hitman. Dahlia got out of the car and drove away, believing her husband would be murdered just two days later. She followed orders and went to the gym at 5.43 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Police then knocked on the door and gave Michael the unfortunate news of his wife's intentions before driving him to the police station. Dahlia was called back to the house by a sergeant one hour later. Everything about the crime scene was fake, except for the news camera which captured the entire incident. I'm Sergeant Ramsey. I'm, I'm the one that called you. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry to call you. Listen, we had a report of a disturbance at your house, and there were shots fired. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am. He's been killed. No, 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 no. He's, he's been killed, ma'am. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Listen. No, no. Try to calm down. No. Oh, my no. God. Right no. We need to get you to the station. No. We need to get you to our police station. No. We, I can't let you stand, ma'am. We have to do our job. If you want us to find his killer, I mean, plus okay, one. We need you to calm down. I'm going to need you to go with these detectives, okay? Does he have enemies? Is there anyone that would want to hurt him? Okay, who would want to hurt him? Witnesses said they saw a black male running from me. I can't let you see him, ma'am. Ma he knows, right? right this is so funny. Detective Yopi, you just I got pranked. You. You to to I can't, ma'am. Go with these detectives. If you want to help your husband, okay? If you want to help your husband, you need to go to the station with these gentlemen. And tell us everything you know about who he knows, my who he's connected to. House. Don't worry, we've already taken care of dogs with animal control Please. for right now. No. Everything's under control. And we'll take care of everything else, okay? Thank you, guys. That is... The protocol that we have to do with this with your wife. We've got to advise you of your rights, so you know, okay? If you don't understand any of them, you just tell me, and I'll stop and repeat. And first of all, let me just tell you, I'm sorry for your loss. I just want to see my husband, please. All right. I love my husband. I want to see him. No, no. You don't want to see him. I just want to see him. Bring him in! You don't. No. Could you listen, please? <laughs> this is something because we're going to videotape that I need you to sign also. It gives us the right to videotape it. You want to read that? Bring him in! Well, you're being videotaped. That's all part of it. Oh, this is a spicy one. This is a good episode. Whose number is this? That's your home number. Oh. Okay. Listen, is there anybody that you know that you think would want to kill your husband? I think on probation. For what? Dahlia recounts Michael's entire criminal history in vivid detail, gives multiple reasons as to why someone would want him dead, and even names a potential suspect, who in reality had nothing to do with the situation oh and was God. only a former business associate. That's people messed up. People were happy up. that he was getting on probation because it's a lot of money he's got to pay back. Well, when you say people, who are you talking about? People that were involved with him before? Just or? a little bit of everything. This was supposed to be something when he got off probation. It was supposed to be between us. And he went and he told, you know, friends of Dude, his, he told, you know, certain people. Dude, her ex-husband is so lucky into a lot of the guys that he her other ex him. looked like out for him. Ago, we ran into someone, and that was a, a target. I mean, you know, and the guy comes up to us, and he's, like, with organized crime. It seems like a lot of the guys from Boca are starting to move up here, and we're constantly running into, you know what I mean, a lot of the guys that he, he knows and mm -hmm. things like that. I miss subtitles. So a lot of money. It was a hundred and... $91,000 that he had to pay back. So 
I know certain names, you know what I mean, and I know certain families, they were on the news, like the guys that all just went away. Mm -hmm. What nationality are you, Spanish? My mom's from Peru and my dad's from Egypt. Wow. Yeah. I, I want to tell you everything, the whole, so that way you guys kind of know what's yeah, going on. I, I yeah, I tell them. So that's what happened with that. So he didn't know how to tell everybody what was going on with everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, he was shot. He was shot twice. And I want you to know all this. Do you know this? Did they tell you out there? Uh, not exactly. I mean, they told me he was shot. When I was at the gym, I got a phone call. I didn't hear my phone ring, and I called back, and they told me just to please come that something happened at my house. Yeah, he would, evidently, your husband answered the door, and they took him back upstairs. And in the bedroom. He had cameras, though. Why would he answer the door? Like, he doesn't answer for anybody he doesn't know. I have and no I mean, the only person, like his probation officer is like the only, you know what I, I mean? I have no idea. He would not answer at the door. We have cameras, like at our house. Maybe he knows this person. I didn't know you had oh. yeah. Because when we got there, some of your neighbors heard the, the commotion. We have cameras. The front door has cameras. Oh, that's the back great. door has cameras. Then, but they don't record. And you'll, they oh, don't, don't record. Nobody knows. We told everybody they record, but they don't record oh, God. because he didn't want them to make a hole in the garage. Right now, I'm going to go out and get in touch with the officers at the scene. I want to see if the house was burglarized. Okay. All right, just hang on for a second. Thank you. Oh, they put they put the subtitle for thank you. <laughs> the lead investigator returns 16 minutes later. Now you know that I've advised you of your rights, right? Yes, you have. Okay. The game's over with. Okay? There's no more games with you and I. Now we're going to get down to serious business. I want to know if you know this guy. <gasps> Come here. Bring this guy in here. Who is it? Which guy? Get over here. I want to see her get reaction. They bring in the undercover cop who remains in character, acting like he's been caught, but refuses to allege Dahlia's involvement. She happily plays along. You know who this guy is? No. You've never seen him before? I've never seen him before. Ever. Do you know her? Put your head up and look at her. Put your head up. I've never seen her. What were you doing coming out of her house? Too, too you far. Know. This prank is going too far. <laughs> This is all so unnecessary. Dahlia was able to use her looks to get what she wanted out of life, which of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. People do what they can to get by, which sometimes means relying on physical appearance, and in some cases they have no other option. Yet the majority of those who navigate life in this manner do so without intentionally hurting anyone. Dahlia went out of her way to not only hurt, but to literally slaughter the person whom she had tricked into falling in love with her, and for no other reason than monetary gain. Oh she my hadn't God. come from a broken home, nor was she a battered wife. There were no mitigating circumstances whatsoever. Only the cold-blooded pursuit to get what she wanted, how she wanted, impartial to the suffering she would cause as a wow. result. In the next moments, her karmic debt will have finally caught up, and for perhaps the first time in her adult life, neither sex appeal nor her family fabricated charm will be enough to save her from the consequences of her actions. You're going to jail today for solicitation of murder. You're under arrest. That's an undercover police officer. We filmed everything that you did, recorded everything that you did. You're going to jail for solicitation of first degree murder of your husband. I didn't do anything. Did you hear what I just told you? I heard what you said, but I didn't Everything, do listen to me. Everything has been recorded. You were photographed in the convertible when you sat in his car in the front of CVS. What do you want to do? What do you want to do here, I didn't Dahlia? Do anything. Listen to me. I didn't do anything. You're going to I jail. I didn't do anything. Please, I didn't do anything. Don't tell me you didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You're going to jail today. As soon as I'm done, oh they're going to come in here and handcuff you and take you to the Palm Beach County Jail, <laughs> book you for solicitation of first degree murder on your husband. Your husband is well and alive. Thank God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can I see him? No, he doesn't want to see you. I'm so hard to see him. He doesn't want to see you. She said thank God. You better quit your plan. Listen to me. I want you to quit your acting. She's still acting. And get this over with. I'm not. Yes, you are. Okay. You know what? You need a real good attorney.
You need a real good attorney. How because embarrassing. we're going to show him the film where you say you're five thousand percent sure you want him dead. You think I made that up? You think I made that up? It's exactly what's going to happen. I'm putting talk with you. When I leave this room, no other officer will ever talk to you again. The next time we see you is when you're in trial. Now you can make it right here, or you're going to trial, and you're going to do life in prison. You want to cooperate with us, whatever you want to do. It's over and done once I walk out. I'm not coming back in to talk to you. And no one else is here. What do you want to do before I leave here? Because the next officer comes here, he's going to handcuff you and take you to the jail. Can I see my husband, please? No, he doesn't want to see you. He doesn't want to see you. I'm leaving now. There he goes. Can I have an officer come in here and cuff this? The person? I don't know what's going on, please. Can we go ahead and arrest her for Close to your first degree murder. Can we see what's happening, please? Can you stand up? Stand up, please. Stand up. Stand up. Dahlia is then granted her fraudulent wish and comes face to face with her husband. Oh my God. She's alive. Come here, please. Come here. Mike, come here. Come here, please. Come here. Yeah, can't fix it. Why not? I didn't do anything to you. you. Mike, come here, please. Come here. <laughs> Mike, can we take her back to booking, please? <laughs> Dahlia was given roughly 15 minutes in her cell to calm down. Oh, yes! This is so satisfying! She was then brought back to the interrogation room, where two less confrontational <laughs> right. detectives Come would pursue here, a confession. Mike. They were hoping the immediate switch from hostility to patience would influence her compliance. Oh, my God. I, I wish I could watch this in, like, higher quality. You're my rights. How embarrassing. Make a phone call. Okay. Earlier this morning, Sergeant Sheridan, Reggie, your rights from that car. Oh, I right? can't. This is so satisfying. Your, rights, your Fifth Amendment rights? Yeah, but I wanted to make a phone call. Okay, so we'll the phone call. We will let you do that later. Not right now, though. So while I'm still here. Um. Yeah. Later on, we will. Lock her up. We got the tape. Lock her up. Did you understand your rights? Or you didn't understand them. I wasn't. She doesn't need rights anymore. Okay. Okay. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and read them again. Okay. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and ask me. And I'll explain them to you. Okay. Okay. You understand your your Fifth Amendment rights now, all of them. Yeah. Okay. Um. Can I go to the regular restroom, please, before we start? Is that okay? Can you she doesn't want to use the cell toilet. Okay. I didn't feel comfortable going in the other one. Okay. I'm sorry, I no will problem. go on. No problem. You mind if I call you Dahlia? Yeah, please. Okay. All right. Um, do you understand what happened today? What's going on here? A little. Okay. Now, slowly, I'm understanding a little bit better. What's your understanding? <laughs> okay. I was told one thing, and now it's like, slowly, like, all these things start. Uh-huh. like... I don't, I mean, I don't uh -huh. know what happened. Uh -huh. Do you know that you are arrested today? You're being arrested. <laughs> that part I understand. Okay. Do you know what for? I can't. <laughs> Not really, no. You know another charge? No, nobody. Okay, go ahead and tell her to charge out. Okay. Tell her. You're being arrested for soliciting to commit murder. Okay, and what that means is you attempted to hire someone to kill somebody else, meaning your husband, okay? Don't shake your head, bitch. And that's why you're what here, you and that's what you're getting charged with. Okay, no. You, no, okay, you don't yeah. understand? Or? No, I never did that. Okay, but that, that's what you're being charged with, okay. and um, we have plenty of evidence to back it up, okay? So, with your rights in mind, we want to give you an opportunity to do some soul searching maybe and maybe get a lot off your chest and tell us the truth. That's what we want to hear. 
The evidence oh against my her gosh. was overwhelming. I want to be a detective the lack of now. techniques being initiated. The detectives feel that this is an open and shut case, and whether the suspect chooses to confess at this moment or not, they believe the eventual outcome will be the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has been worked for a couple. It just days doesn't now. matter. It's not just the first day we're doing this. Reference to this case, and we have a lot of information to support our charge. It's just not real, uh, a quick little thing. No, not in GTA so, in real life. You know, you're gonna know when you're lying to us and all that. We just want to hear the truth. I mean, it's done. It's over with now. I want to catch so, a liar and, um, and send them to prison to for life. That's all we that sounds like hear. fun. And we know the truth. So, I know it's hard to commit to that, but now's your time, you know? Do you have anything to say about this? I want to talk to my husband. Okay, well, you can talk to your husband. He's not here right now. We let him go home. He's taking care of the house and the dogs, so. The good thing about this whole thing is that nobody got killed. A tragedy was prevented today. Yeah. You could look at it that way, you know? Yeah. That's simple. A tragedy uh, was prevented. A tragedy, I mean, someone's life, so. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. Everything's on tape, Dahlia. There's no denying it. You know? Everything's on tape. And it's not a bluff, so. You gotta understand this, okay? Dahlia, listen to me for a second, okay? Do anything. Listen to me for a second, okay? This is not our first day, okay? It's not definitely not our second day, all right? This is an ongoing investigation, all right? Not only do we have your videotape, we have every conversation that you've had leading to this point, all right? So for you to sit here and deny that you haven't done anything, it's not going to help. Every little thing that you've done since this started, we've been involved in it. Do you understand that? I mean, I'm just telling you the truth. That's she doesn't truth. understand how. Well, unfortunately, you're not going home, okay? You're looking at some serious charges here. <laughs> Do you understand that you made the attempt to hire somebody to kill your husband? That's how serious this is, okay? You can sit here and shake your head and deny it, but I'm going to tell you right now, all right, when they, the jury and the judge sees that videotape, of you having this conversation, making a deal, all right? Because that's how far you went, all right? It wasn't, it, it's not about denying it, it wasn't me, I didn't do anything, because the video, the audio, it's not gonna lie, all right? And all the evidence that we have collected through all this investigation. Just say it, you yes. You like a fool right now denying this. Yeah, true. Like my partner just said, everything's on tape, video and audio. I know, but you're not going home, you see? You're being arrested, so you're not going home. Oh, my gosh. I have to go home. It's late to go home. I know, but you, you can't. It's impossible. You can't. You're going to the after this. You can't go home. You're being arrested. This is a game. In your mind, it might be a little game, but this is very, very serious. Murder? Are you kidding me? Dahlia refuses to give any sort of acknowledgement whatsoever, even after being confronted with the hidden camera footage. She was then taken to the Palm Beach Detention Center, professing her innocence the entire way. When she finally got to jail, she accepted the offer to make a phone call. Now, try and imagine yourself in her position. Now think of the absolute last person on planet Earth that you would call at that moment. Uh -oh. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to fight with you. Honestly. I can't help you. I don't you understand what just happened? What they're saying is not true. How is that possible? Like, I'm sitting here. It's not true. It's not possible. You wouldn't even give me two minutes to talk to you, but it's not possible. What they're Damn. saying is not true. How in the hell did I hear it and see it? I heard what you heard. I heard what you heard and I saw what you saw. Everything they showed you, they showed me. And how is it not, how are you telling me that? that I am giving you my word that it's not true. 
What Dahlia is doing here is known as gaslighting, a textbook form of manipulation used by psychopaths, sociopaths, and all those with narcissistic personality disorder. She is trying to cultivate doubt into Michael's mind by making him question his own perceptions. She does wow. this by using persistent denial and misdirection to try and destabilize his thought process. Yet the hole that Dahlia had dug for herself on this occasion seems a little bit too deep for her device yeah, to have Yeah, this video evidence. Effect. What do you expect? I, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. Mike, please, I need an attorney. Can you please help me? Mike. The truth. Mike. Your brother was here and I spoke to him. And he's going to go talk to your mom. I called them for you already. Right? This is not true. I have a guy too. Look, how do you explain what I saw on her? Like, I am limited on my phone call. You know more than anybody. It's not true. Just give me time so I can talk to you. What, what did you say? I saw it. I heard it. I saw what you saw and I heard what you heard. Okay, well, what, what, and what the f You said you wanted to have me killed. I heard that. What's it's not true. Problem? That is not how true. How is it not true? How can you believe that? I heard your voice. How can you believe it? That isn't the point. I heard you it's, say it. It's not. I heard what you heard, and it's not. What did you wow. what did I hear then? I heard you say. I heard, I heard, I heard the tape. Okay, I heard the tape, and I saw pictures, and I saw of the whole nine yards. I saw all of it. So why would you meet a guy in a parking lot? Explain that. I'm sitting here on the phone. I will tell you when I see you in person. Please. You're not, I can't come there anyway. I'm not allowed there. That's not true. Mike? Said that. They tell you that on purpose. That's not true. I, I don't know what you could tell me. Even if, let's pretend, I said, oh, it's all better. I can't, they're charging your ass. Don't you get it? Mike, I didn't do anything. Please. I don't know what to say to you. I can't help you. What do you mean? I, it's out of my hand. You're not even trying. What am I supposed to do? Mike? So I can talk to you. I, I saw you with this guy in the truck or whatever the f it was. I saw it. I heard your voice clearly. Well, I don't I understand. Did not say those things. Period. So how Period. You your voice on that tape recorder. Like, I I'm limited with my time, please. You gotta be kidding me, man. Stallion. I heard you say that shit. Like, I'm, hey? I'm telling you right now, okay? You, you can't fix it. How are you going to tell me that you didn't say it, you didn't do it? When I saw you say it, and I, I saw you do it. Do you have any idea how I was when they told me what supposedly happened to you, how I got, and how I was, and how everything? Can you what? Me so I can talk to you? No. No! Why? Why the f should I? Because... You know me. I never, ever, 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 ever in my wildest dreams ever want that for you, ever. Well, you, you said it, Diane. You no, hired the guy. Not. No, I did not say anything, period. I didn't say anything. I don't know how you, you're going to actually have the nerve to sit here and lie Wow. Now. I can't help you even if I wanted to. Do you get it? Why don't you want to? It's out of my hands. You're not even trying. It's different if you're trying. You're not even trying. What, what could I possibly do for you? I don't get it. What could I do? You're not even trying. Trying what? I'm sitting here like a dumbass. True. Okay, they're getting ready to like take me again. Bye. Guys, I'm gonna, listen, I'm going to give you some advice and you need to listen. You're going to be running around in there for a little while, a couple days. Mike? You need to <laughs> And just go with it. And keep to yourself and don't say a lot. Like, I love you. Don't do this to me. Bye. This is the most manipulative, blatant <laughs> gaslighting I've ever seen in my life. I can't help you. I, I, there's nothing I can do to help you. Just say you don't want to help no, her. You know what I'll do for you? Seriously? What? You sign my house back over to me. I'll help your mom. I'm in for you. Give me my house back. Oh, that's nice that's of it. him. Poor guy. That's, that's it. I'll have the papers sent over to you somehow. You'll sign them over to me, and then I will help your mother. Yeah, okay? her her mom is innocent. I know you wouldn't sign anything. I knew that wasn't going to happen. So I can't help you. 
Good, that's okay, what you're thinking about. I'm sitting here watching. You're thinking about how to help. Try having to kill him. I just offered to help you, and again, you have the balls to say no. True. You basically said f you to me, which is hilarious considering your situation. True. And what the f just happened today? <laughs> All right. Bye. Dahlia called her mother soon after, who was already informed of the situation by Is that Michael. Her mom? It appeared to be a little bit more understanding over the whole situation. Hello? Mom, I'm in jail. I know, Dahlia. I know. I find out. I know. Okay, who do you want me to call? I need you to call Mike in New York, please. I call already and I call Dahlia. Everybody knows. What is it you want me to do? Where are you exactly? I'm in the county jail. I need you to come. Within my stay, is he coming? Everybody's coming, Dahlia. We're going to go ahead and get your lawyer. Okay? Don't worry. Where are you? Are you in Gun Club? Yes, I'm here, Mom. My sister's coming. <laughs> okay, Dahlia. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. You did. I know you did. What? I know you did. Where are you? Are you in Gun Club? Yes, I'm here. I'm in Gun Club. Oh, and I my. Get out the house. I want to <laughs> Okay, well, but right now we're going to need to have a lawyer. People first. like this I exist. There are people right in the Dahlia world spent 20 like months this. in jail before standing trial in April 2011. Her defense was bizarre. They claimed Michael DiPolito was a fan of reality TV and the murder for hire plot was a hoax just so he could get on television. I'm just having fun with you. Come on, yeah, I'm with you. you. You having fun yeah. with me? Let me yeah. ask you something. Is, is this fun, Mr. DiPolito? This sucks. Okay. <laughs> it, was it fun when you got arrested? No. Was it fun when you went to court? Horrible. Okay. <laughs> so, is there anything funny about this proceeding at all, Mr. DiPolito? The questions you're asking me, some of them, yeah. You don't like them, do you? It's ridiculous. I am not here. We're not here because of me. Well, I'm, I might as well, you might as well put me up next. I mean, what are we doing here? The verdict came a month later on May 13th. The jury needed just three hours of deliberation. Verdict, we the jury find as follows, as to count one, we find the defendant guilty of solicitation to commit first degree murder. If you find the defendant guilty, do you find that there is a firearm included in the solicitation? Yes. And you and I have spoken previously about you wanting to share some comments with the court um, as the judge considers the appropriate sentence in this case? Yes, I do. I have no words to explain why this unfortunate event happened, and I am sorry that it did. I don't support what it happened. But I know that you have the power in deciding what happens to the next phase of Dahlia's life in showing mercy. In life, we make mistakes. Sometimes we will deserve a second chance. Poor mom. That is not dangerous. Your Honor, I'm asking you. Um. I'm begging you, please. She is dangerous. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Poor mom. Where do I begin? Uh, let me just start off by saying, you know, uh, when I married my wife, I was very much in love with her. And, uh, I thought we were doing things that normal married people do, and I was a very good husband, and I provided everything we needed, and, you know, th that being said, uh, lo and behold, you know, that wasn't the case. I don't know who these people are talking about, but it's not that girl, you know, and I, I feel bad. I don't even want to be here. Oh. Since this started, I've always put my hand out. Give me my house. Let's Let's be done with it. I'll beg the judge to even do whatever. I don't personally gain anything from this. You know, the difference between me and I guess uh, what's going on here, uh, you know, I went to prison. You know how I got there? I said I did it. Yeah, I did it. Let's get this over with and handle it. You know, that hasn't happened here. True. I mean, this girl doesn't feel sorry for anything. She still doesn't think she did anything. True. And believe me, I don't want to get up here and be nasty, but the reality is I sit and listen to this even today, we're talking about a retrial? Retrial for what? I mean, what is it we're doing? Who didn't understand what happened here? True. They still don't want to admit anything happened. Nothing bad happened. It's all good. Let's just all go home and it's fine. I'm not okay. You know, my father died. I was supposed to have been able to travel to see him. I didn't get to see my dad. 
You know, my dad's dead. And, uh... Oh, poor Mike. You know, that was part of my plan. Get off probation, go see my family, spend time with my father. If she would have owned it, like a normal person, and would have owned up to something, I would respect that. But instead, when I get to court, I hear that I want a reality television show. As wow. soon as we walk out here, you know they're filing for an appeal. You know why? Because they think everybody in this room is stupid. That's why. Because all, we're all stupid, and they're smarter than us. And nobody did anything. And God, she's a great girl. And whatever. You know, when I met her, I thought all those things. I don't want to offend anybody, and believe me, I feel sorry for everybody that's in here crying. But you know what? I got to feel sorry for myself. True. Nobody's helping me. My mother had a nervous breakdown. I'm like... I'm gonna have a nervous breakdown. You know, I just don't know how I'm feeling some days, and it's just not fair. Like I said, protect and, and I mean, Mike at all heart. costs. I wish we weren't here. I wish she would have did anything but what she did. Uh, the, the jury's found you guilty, Ms. DiPolito, of um, solicitation to commit first-degree murder. Uh, so my task is to figure out what an appropriate sentence would be somewhere between 48 months and 30 years in the Department of Corrections. How do I rehabilitate you from what you have done? And, and I'm. I think that's that's a function of, of you know spinning your moral compass. Uh, I think your moral compass is askew. Uh, I think that uh, yeah, she's manipulative. It's, it's something that uh, um, it's not like getting a drug addict off drugs or an alcoholic off alcohol. Uh -huh. but, but rehabilitation, I hope that occurs as part of this sentence. Uh, a big variable and the one that's most conspicuous is punishment. You impose a sentence to punish bad behavior, criminal behavior, and that's going to be a, a large component of this sentence. Hmm. And also a valid factor in imposing a sentence is uh, re uh, retribution. And, and retribution is giving society the, the vent, the outlet, the sense of that person got what he or she had coming. So I consider those factors and try to figure out what weighs most in uh, tailoring a sentence for you. Um, and it has to do with the facts of the case, and it has to do with who you are and what you were thinking. And here's the way I see it. I think that, that a lot of it is, is what were your motivations? What were you doing? What were you thinking when that was going on? And I just come to the most obvious conclusion that you were motivated by greed, mm -hmm. by avarice. Mm -hmm. There's no evidence that you were being beaten and you were defending yourself, that you were a battered wife. Mm -mm. that you were an alcoholic, that you were mm -mm. the victim of child abuse, that you were uh, somehow acting in defense of yourself, even under uh, a misguided notion. Pure greed. There's none of that here. All of your conduct uh, was just for self-indulgence um, and just trying to take every bit of money that you could get a hold of so that you could go on and live this fast life. In as early as March, you, you began this relentless campaign to get rid of your husband. First, you're thinking, well, I'll just get him sent off to prison, and that would be good enough. Uh, you wow. used guile and sophistry to dupe others into your web of deception. Uh, you were the puppet master that was pulling all the strings. You weren't acting at the direction of somebody else. You weren't under the influence of somebody else. Uh, you were the one calling the shots. And you were engaged in a course of conduct not over some momentary lapse of good judgment. This wasn't like, ah, I ran a red light, I shouldn't have done that, or ah, oh, what was I thinking? I had the gun in my hand and, and I shot it because I was angry. It was weeks and months that Is she listening? with these different schemes to try to rid yourself of your husband that was just something out of a novel. And it was, it, it was um, you know, uh, horrible to watch it unfold as, as, the, as the trial testimony came out. It was pure evil. Uh, after those attempts to uh, have your husband taken out of the picture by way of sending him back to prison for a long period of time, and when you learned that it wasn't good enough to have the house in your name, that if you wanted to sell the house, you were still going to need his signature, I, I think that's when it started to turn to uh, even more sinister uh, behavior. Wow. Uh, Mr. Salnick indicates that you know being remorseful or saying I'm sorry really doesn't mean anything. And I disagree. I disagree. I think even today, Mr. DiPolito, still your husband, I think that I'm sorry, it's my fault, I did it, would have gone a long way. Not only for his healing, but it, it would have perhaps suited your own purpose. But I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard 
an ounce of remorse. Uh, yeah, she hasn't said sorry once. Uh, when, when confronted with the obvious facts, the, the most powerful uh, um, testimony as to who you are is when you were in the police station and your husband walked by and looked in and you were begging him, tell him this is all wrong, tell him this is all wrong. And then later on the telephone, you were saying, he was confronting you with the evidence. I saw the tapes. I saw the, the videotape of you trying to have me killed. And you just cold-bloodedly said to him, I saw what you saw, and I'm telling you that's not true. Yeah. And, and it was astonishing, mm -hmm. the, the, the cold-blooded um, yes, denial that you're willing to go to to try to uh, avoid the obvious. You have a certain facet of who you are with your mom, your sister, your brother, and they see the good in you, uh, as siblings and parents should. Uh, but who you are when no one's looking, other than a camera in a police car, is quite different. And I think that peers deeply into your soul and speaks volumes of the way you were presenting this and it was uh, quite chilling to witness that. Uh, based upon those factors, then, Ms. DiPoleto, I'll accept the uh, uh, verdict of the jury. I'll find you guilty. I'll adjudicate you guilty. And I'm sentencing you to 20 years in the Department of Corrections. Dahlia's first encounter with retribution was a big one, yet it didn't last long. The sentence was thrown out on a technicality one month later, and she was able to remain under house arrest for six years awaiting her next trial. Her second trial began in 2016. What? Dahlia DiPolito takes the stand with an unusual defense. What? Dahlia says it was all part of a plan she hatched with her then-husband, Michael DiPolito, and former lover, Mohammed Shahadi, to get famous. Her now ex-husband, Mike DiPolito, says he couldn't wait to see what she'd say in court. Let me know when she's going. I'll be sitting in the back with popcorn. I'd love to see this. In an exclusive pretrial interview with 2020 this past December, DiPolito said she's just misunderstood. Who is Dahlia DiPolito? Uh, understanding, sweet, and compassionate. Manipulative, conniving. I, I got more than three. Malicious, baited, enticed, and entrapped. Her attorney, Brian Claypool, says Dahlia is the innocent victim of a fame-hungry police department. What the police department did is they found out she's an attractive woman. In their minds, they're, they're like ching, ching, ching. This is a perfect skit. There's no question about it that the Boynton Beach Police Department was dead set on manufacturing a crime here. How damaging are these tapes to your client? And they are damaging because people have formed opinions. Our job in the second trial is to provide the proper context for the jury to see that this is not really what it looks like. Claypool claims she only kept up the act because Mohammed threatened her with a gun. He threatened to hurt me and to hurt my family. Did you believe he would? Absolutely, yes. So she was threatened to act out a hoax on a videotape? I mean, do you understand how ridiculous that sounds to no. a lot of people watching this? Yeah, that's not ridiculous. You've got a six foot two, 230 pound man with a gun. Saying you will do this Absolutely. YouTube hoax you, or else? Right. 5,000% sure, not 100% sure, not 1,000% sure, but 5,000% sure. Is this real? How do you explain that? I look at that video and I see somebody who's struggling with whether she's really sure. She's struggling with... Uh, why, why, well... How is she struggling if she's 5,000% sure? Well, you what? might find that humorous, but I, when I hear people say they're sure, I'm 110% sure. Why didn't she just tell police her version of what happened? I've asked her that question, too. Oh, uh, yeah, everybody, hey, Sergeant. This was just uh, a YouTube thing we were putting together. She was in a state of shock. I... I couldn't react. I just completely froze. I wanted to get out of there and I felt just paralyzed. The tape was, it was a show, it was a tape. That, that was the purpose of it. You were acting in those tapes? Yes. But you're telling the truth now? Yes. Why should we believe you? Because it's what happened. It's the truth. State of Florida versus Dahlia. Please, a guilty. Verdict. We, the jury, find as follows. As to count one, we find the defendant guilty of solicitation to commit first degree murder as charged in the information. Yeah!
2017 in West Palm Beach. Dahlia DiPolito was sentenced to 16 years in prison on July 21st, 2017. Dipping the jail she was not now. given the possibility of parole, and her release date is set Psychopath. for August 24th, 2032. Oh, her appeal God. was rejected by the Florida Supreme Court in September of 2019, denied, and her bitch. sentence is now definitive. She is currently being held at the Lowell Correctional Institution in Gainesville, Florida, where she is expected to remain until the day of release. She will be 50 years old. Oh, wait, that's so scary. Imagine if you're a crazy prostitute wife that you gave your house to tries to get you thrown in jail on drug charges and then tries to pay someone to murder you. It's got to be somewhat satisfying to have that person call and ask you for help. <laughs> It's like, I really need your help. And you're like, yeah, I bet you do. But yeah. you tried to kill me. I spit it for my. That was probably really, really, really satisfying for him.